All right, this is going to be an exciting workshop. Thank you all very much for coming, taking some uh, time of your day to come and learn. Uh, we have nine core values here at AGM, and this is what makes us successful and makes us get our clients a lot of results. And one of these core values is always be learning. So the combination of here in the team, the AGM team of always learning in combination with applying it we, across our clients gives us the perfect um, knowledge and confidence to give results. And then once we prove these marketing strategies and we see that what works, then we share it with you guys. So I'm going to go over some housekeeping rules. So please silence your phones or turn them off. Do not walk in front of the camera. They're all the way in the back, so we're fine there. Uh, please step out of the building if you need to take a phone call. Uh, no side conversations while the speaker is delivering the workshop. And if you have any questions, we're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna answer some questions at the end of the workshop. So we're gonna have Jorge, and then we're gonna have our Amazon director Rob do his uh, Amazon delivery. So everybody, welcome Jorge the Code. On. All right, good. All right, guys, thanks for coming out. Um, for the mic, I think we're going to be putting it up here, right? Or I think we're going to have a mic stand. So if you guys have any questions, we'll put it up over here. You can just come to the mic because um, this way anybody that's watching online can also hear you. They can't hear um, you guys speaking in here. So just better engagement. And for those of you guys watching online, if you want to go ahead and leave us your questions and we will get to those as well. So today, we're going to be talking about Amazon, Shopify, and social media, and how that all kind of like relates to each other, and I'm going to show you how we use it, social media, to drive all this traffic over to our Shopify stores, or what it really should be, and your Amazon. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. So for social media, um, I like to look at this as a, as a funnel, social media funnel. And a funnel is just some, simply something you know, where people enter in through the top and they come out the bottom, um, which is the last section here is how to monetize this. So the first thing is you gotta get attention and then I'm gonna show you what to do with that attention so you finally get to the end and monetize these guys. Attention is important to us. I mean, it's even in our name, attention grabbing media. This is something that we chose for our name because Obviously, you're not, you, know, you, you need the attention first, and then once you have that, how do you get them over to you know, purchase your products or your services? So um, this is what we do to get attention on social media. Um, the types of contents that you can be using for this, so I'll show you guys some examples, um, but let me go through the list first. So the first one is infographics, and all this is is just kind of like the word says, it's information on a graphic. So very simple, just if you have benefits or if you have features or if you have maybe a step-by-step -step that you know, solves a problem for your target audience, you can put that into an image. Sometimes an image can um, communicate a lot better than just text, right? So infographics work really well. Brand story videos, these are awesome. I'll show you a really good example of this, but this is basically just people want to be connected to a brand. It's no longer how it used to be maybe a while back, like these big brands like, I don't know, uh, Gain or, or Dawn Dish Soap, like all these like huge, you know, mega brands where they could just put out a brand and they don't, you know, necessarily connect with the customer. Now with social media, it's all about connecting. So you want to be getting on camera if you can or getting somebody to do that for you, for your brand, but you got to be connecting with your customers and telling them about your brand stories. The next thing you could do, if you don't want to get on, on a video camera, you could do written blogs or articles. Get your information you know, uh, featured on maybe magazines, online newsletters, things like that. But the written content is a really good way to get started when you don't want to get on camera. But I'll show you the best way to do it is actually to get on camera. And again, if you don't want to do it, just think with maybe hiring somebody to do this for you. If you go to like Indeed or any one of these like, um, uh, job you know, um, websites, you'll see that there is now uh, a big demand for people looking to hire content creators like, as a full-time thing for your business. So you need, you need your social media content. 
Um, another idea is FAQ videos. So this is basically you know, questions that you've been getting. Maybe people reply to your emails. Maybe they're leaving comments on your posts. Um, or just if you have an Amazon store, uh, you know, there's a section for questions that people have. Take those questions and just simply make a video and answer each one of those questions. I have some examples of that as well. And then lastly, I mean, the main thing, if you're trying to launch a product on Shopify or Amazon, you're going to want to obviously be sharing your product videos or images. <clears throat> and you can do that different ways, different angles, you know, different um, ways to feature either the benefits or the features of your product, the unique selling propositions, you know. Um, video will communicate the best, so that's the one I recommend. All right. You have a question? Oh, okay, yeah, let me go back real quick. Yeah. So it's infographics. Just the last one. Yep, the last one is product video images, FAQ videos, blogs or articles, brand story videos, and infographics. So if you already have content out there, right? I don't know if you guys are here just starting out. Some of you might already have, let's say, a YouTube channel, a Facebook page, or a Facebook group. Maybe you have reviews out there, um, whatever, if you already have something, you can actually just take that and build a social media platform, which is what we did here with Natural Slim. So this is Manuel's, um, our CEO's and his family's uh, brand, Natural Slim. Um, they you know, offer um, weight loss consultation and, and supplements, so physical products. But um, his dad, Frank, has a huge YouTube channel, and he, w he decided to do a, a lot of videos to provide video that, or to provide value that way, and that's the way that we were you know, creating our audience. So all we did is we took the videos, and then we just um, edited them to be a vertical you know, format, and this is TikTok right here. So you can see it's almost at a million uh, followers in just less than a year. This, ac this account actually got taken down for us a, a couple of times because TikTok whatever, they're a little sensitive on some videos that we put out. But, um, and this screenshot was from a couple days ago, so we might have already crossed that today. But, but yeah, you can simply see it's just videos edited in a vertical format, and we are always have him on camera. And these get a lot of engagement, like some of these have 178,000 likes, um, 72,000 likes, this one has um, almost 2,000 comments. Uh, 24,000 times that it was saved, you can see right here. So, you know, as long as you're providing value, you're building your audience, which you're going to see is one of the main things that you should be focusing on with social media funnels. Okay, so I talked about like the brand story videos. This is what we call the founder's story. So this is the founder of the brand. So you guys would get on a, a camera and then just tell your story of how you got started. This one right here, um, this was as, as of yesterday, had 19 million views organically, 2,000 likes, 10,000 comments, and I'm gonna play it for you so you can see what it is. My wife and I just started a small business. We got married about six months ago and have always wanted to start a candy business. So we put together our savings to invest in a freeze dryer. You see, a freeze dryer turns normal candy into crispy, crunchy candy. Just listen to me eating this freeze dried Jolly Rancher. We decided to name our business Candies, and it took a long time to get the logo right. But once we figured it out, we were super happy. Then the next steps were labeling the packaging and filling up the candy. And finally, after 11 months of hard, hard, hard work, we got our first ever order. And so far, we've had 10 orders. So crazy. So if you want to try some freeze-dried candy and support us along the way, go check out the sample pack. We put it together, and we'll ship it to you for free. So that was cool, right? And it's pretty easy. You're just kind of sharing your story, which, you know, you guys are the best ones to, to do that. And if you notice, a couple of things that I'll point out, like there's a lot of um, edits and cuts. So you're always wanting to change what you're showing on video camera every three to four seconds or so. Always make sure there's like some motion going on. That holds people's attention a lot better. Um, and he mentioned there he had 10 orders. This is the first video that they posted on, on, their, on their account. He was like, oh, I'm excited for 10 orders, right? Well, now, if you go, it's only been, I think, about a month or so. He sold out. He's got a waiting list. People are, like, pre-purchasing these candies. So that's the power of social media, especially TikTok. Gets a lot of attention. 
Okay, so other ideas that you can um, be you know, sharing on social media. So one of the best to do it is Dr. Berg. If you guys don't know him, definitely go check him out on YouTube so you can see how he does his content. And it, it's a very informative, very value kind of content, but it's not salesy. But somehow he sells you. It's very sneaky, <laughs> but uh, it's very good. So this is just a simple you know, video where he's talking about MCT oil versus coconut oil. His you know, niche or his audience, his uh, space is more of the keto you know, diet. Um, not broad, you know, let me talk about health, and it you know, includes everything. So he decided to focus on, on keto, and that way he was able to provide a lot more value to people looking for certain you know, problems that, that they're having with the keto diet. So he started noticing that people were leaving comments like, okay, fine, I'm doing the keto diet, I believe you, you, you provide some good value, right, but what do I eat? I feel so like restricted and that sort of thing. So from the comments, he got this idea to do recipe videos. And that's what this coconut, uh, a keto, uh, coconut cream pie is. <clears throat> and then him and his wife started doing it together and then they started getting a lot more engagement. So that was another successful action and he keeps, uh, he keeps doing that. And then this is one of uh, example of the infographic. So it says, will eating more fat knock me out of ketosis? That question also comes from the comments. These are things that people uh, don't know about the keto diet and they're having trouble with or whatever. And all we simply do, this is us actually, we're always you know, researching the comments. It's, a, it's like a survey. People are telling you what they want and what they need. And then we just take that and turn it into an infographic. This one has, well at the time of this screenshot it was uh, 52 comments, 32 shares, 333 likes. So there's a lot of engagement with that. Because, because we're, we're basically kind of taking what they're telling us and we just put it back out there for them, right? It's like a survey. And that's what it results in. So this is his um, YouTube channel. His views on YouTube have crossed 1,750,000,000 views recently. Wow. So it's amazing. And in this, as you'll see, it feeds all his Shopify stores, his Amazon stores, probably Walmart. Uh, you, you'll talk a little bit more about like, how he expanded outside of Shopify and why and all that. But yeah, this, the, just a YouTube channel alone, he can turn off all the ads and his social media you know, attention is feeding all this traffic back to where he wants it to go. And just a, a note, you know, he did start in 2008, so it doesn't happen you know, overnight, and you just gotta be consistent, and you gotta be posting, and at first you might not get any likes or comments or whatever, but just, you know, you're starting to do it more for you at the beginning, just to kind of get used to you know, putting out content, <clears throat> but eventually, snowballs and it turns into something like that. Uh, here's another example from Manuel, our CEO. So this is just like a, a quote, you know, image. Make, we make it kind of look like a, like a tweet almost. But, but yeah, we get some engagement out of that. It's not a, necessarily an e-commerce product, but I just wanted to show you other examples. Um, here's an example of us just basically helping him document his day. Again, not Shopify or Amazon related, but I wanted to show you ideas of what you guys can do for your own products. Along the way, you're, you know, you're doing your orders maybe, you're shipping, you're going to the post office, I don't know, you're receiving your FedEx truck, whatever it is that's happening throughout your day for your e-commerce store, just document it. That's actually one of the easiest, kind of like the best hacks that you can use to create more content. Because sometimes it is a little hard, you're like, well, what am I gonna talk about or what video should I make? And you get a little bit of, uh, What's it called? Analysis paralysis, right? And, but this is an easy way, just document. Take out your phone, you don't need a fancy camera, and just share it. And then um, over here we have um, an example of sharing our customers' reviews. So this is, um, they call him the webinar king, if you haven't followed him. He has some really good content also on YouTube, and we've been growing his channel. He's called Jason Flatland. He holds the record for like the most um, revenue out of one webinar. I think it was over 52 million, right? Or something like that. It was a crazy number, one webinar. And so, you know, we're, we're leveraging his audience and leveraging his success to share it across our social media so we can get that credibility and that what they call social proof. But you guys can do the same. So if, you know, if somebody leaves you a review or a comment on your videos, screenshot it and put it up there, you know? Very easy to create content out of that. I think the other one was uh, sharing the, the YouTube channel, hitting a, um, a milestone on views. 
Okay, here's another example again for the Natural Slim brand. This is us sharing a link to the blogs. So this is a website where we share all the blogs that we write. And really, we kind of hacked that too. What we did is we took uh, his YouTube videos, we transcribed them, and then we just had somebody, you know, edit it a little bit so it can sound like a blog, not like a written, you know, video. But, but that's another hack. So, you know, with one piece of content, one YouTube video, you're creating a lot more. If you notice, I talked about, you know, doing that video and putting it on TikTok. Well, that same video gets transcribed and it gets put as a blog. So we put that on social media. Okay, we also get quotes out of that video. If he mentions a certain thing, I know this is all in Spanish, but um, just as an example, right? So, it, you know, we get a quote from the video, make a quote card like this, and then just put it up. In our case, we have several uh, Facebook pages. One, like you can see here, is for Natural Slim, and then the other one is content only. We never really sell from this page called Metabolismo TV, which is the same name of the YouTube channel. So that's another strategy if you want to go down that route. If you're just getting started, I don't recommend that. You want to focus all your energy and attention onto you know, one, um, first you can, f one platform and also like one uh, form of making content, whether that's videos or blogs or podcasts or whatever it is. And then you can start you know, just kind of leveraging that, that same content and putting it everywhere. Same example, just a different Facebook page, just sharing the blogs right there. Now, that blog, by the way, everybody that hits that website, I have a little piece of code that communicates back to Facebook, and we're collecting all these audiences. It's kind of like when you collect an email or whatever, and then you can you know, retarget them and whatnot. So the blogs do very, very well. Okay, and then here's a simple example. This is probably the most common example when you have a, um, a, a physical product and you want to get out there and share it, right? You start putting out your, your flash sales, your discounts, or just you know, pictures of your product and videos of your product. That works too. It's just that you can't go so heavy on that. People need to have some sort of a value type of post to engage, and that's what these platforms love. And they reward you for that by giving you more reach. So, you know, the, the ones I shared earlier, like the founder story or some sort of infographic or things like that that provide value and, and create the engagement. But again, this is an example. We're just promoting blood sugar product. We have a flash sale, 15% off, and then they land on our, our website over here. Okay, and if you have a... Um, a catalog on your website, there's a way to connect it. It's a little bit too technical, so I'm not gonna get into it here, but there's a way to connect that to your Facebook page, and then it allows you to tag your images directly to your products. So if you ever put up maybe like a post on your Facebook page or your, your profile, right? You know how you can tag your friends, like, oh, I'm with you know, Rob and we're doing a seminar or whatever, right? Um, it's the same thing. You can just tag the product, and if you see right here, People can click that little thing right there, and then um, a little link pops up, so you know, kind of like it says right here, click to view products. And then from there, it takes them to the website. Now they're off on your website and they're shopping. So these are some examples of the shoes, and just another example here of, uh, it says Alaska couldn't have been more perfect. Just kind of documenting their journey, where they're at, what they're doing, and the other one is also the slippers. Oh, one more thing. Um, if you notice, like some of these pictures, like the slippers, they just kind of look very organic type of picture. It's not like, you know, contrast to this other one over here, which is a little bit more edited. And that works really well, too. So you don't have to have like a, a lot of editing to your photos. You just have to focus a lot on putting, you know, volume out there so you can grab this attention. And I'm going to show you what to do with this attention. The first thing is you want to focus on list building. Okay, um, list building. So building your list, I'm gonna go into it. I'll give you some examples too. But essentially it just means you know, grabbing people's phone numbers and emails so that you can communicate to them and you don't have to rely on Facebook showing your posts. You just directly send them a message and communicate to them. Okay, so when you're doing this list building, I want you to think about this, that's called first party data. This is data about your customer that you directly collect, right? So Facebook knows that you liked my post, that you engaged, they know that you visited my website. 
They know that, um, um, you know, let's say for on, on Amazon side of things, they know who's shopping for or who likes what, who's saving what to the cart. All this, that's all third party data. They own it. We don't always get access to all of that. And definitely not like directly, right, to, to that one, you know, customer in specific. So collecting the list, it allows you to collect this first party data, which is very important because it's, it's data and it's something that you control. So here's an example of a post. This is actually a TikTok post and they're now, um, it's pretty cool. Now they're, you know how TikTok is usually like this way, vertical, but now you're able to put like uh, YouTube style videos, which are like more um, landscape like this. But here's a, a post that we were promoting a webinar, free webinar online. And uh, we were going over like the, the diet system that we use and things like that for Natural Slim. <clears throat> And then here's another example of us collecting um, the list. We're promoting a free guide. So it's like a diet guide. Um, and they click the link and they go over to our website. We collect their name, email, phone number. And now we can either call them, sell them something, because we do have people on the phone, like consultants that are willing to you know, make the sale over the phone. Or we could just simply direct them to the website and, and Amazon as well. And this is what it looks like. It results in thousands of emails collected every day. And that's just February. <laughs> so um, highly recommend it. And I'll show you some examples in a little bit of what it looks like once you have emails and you're sending them out. How does that turn into money? We'll get to that in a second. OK, here's another example of what you can do to collect data. So we do a lot of these challenges. We're, we, do a, we have a lot of customers and ourselves as well that are in the um, like health you know, space. So like health challenges are, are something that works really well, and especially for something kind of short, like 30 days, right? We're not asking you to commit to this forever or whatever. And, and because it's a challenge and we kind of stay in touch with you the whole time, people really like that. So 30-day fasting challenge, we just put a little link there, and we'll send them to, I'll show you here in a second. Um, here's another example, an acceptable food list. Again, this is for keto people. They have a hard time knowing like, well, what can I eat? What am I not supposed to eat? All those sort of things. When you identify a problem that your audience has, give it away. Give, you know, figure out how to solve that problem for free. And when you provide so much of that like goodwill and so much value, they trust you. And when they trust you, that's it. You know, it's so easy to buy from you. Uh, just another example, 30-day fasting challenge. You can see it's the same thing, but we're just testing different images. That's another thing that you should take away is the, the, the estimation of like the effort that you need to have to really you know, break through all the noise and to really have success is like there, you need to be testing all the time, all the time. Even when you figure something out that works, we'll take it. Like you can see on the left, 30-day fasting challenge, let's say that works. I'll do the same thing, 30-day fasting challenge with a different image, or I could possibly do a, a variation instead of I don't even know if that's a women, yeah, that's a girl. So maybe I'll do a, you know, a man next time, or maybe I'll do a couple, or whatever. Like I'm, I'm testing all kinds of images to see what works better if I could beat the one that really worked. <clears throat> um, OK, so there's another example. If you have a YouTube channel, you can post. Um, they have something called a community. YouTube uh, came out with this. It's like a, like a feed on your YouTube um, that acts like a social media. So you can share just images. You don't have to have a, a video there. And this one, not even 24 hours, was already getting 237 likes, 24 comments. And then you see the link right there, and we send them over to the 30-day challenge. Another really cool idea that you could do is create an ebook. I mean, it's something that's not going to cost you a lot of money, and you just have to put something together. I recommend don't making it you know, very big, just something like three-pager, five-pager at the most. And with a lot of you know, graphics behind it, just something very valuable that, again, solves a problem for your audience. You, you see, I keep kind of saying the same thing. If you just focus on that, like, people will trust you. And again, they're going to buy from you a lot easier. So um, an ebook doesn't cost you anything to deliver, right? It's digital. So all you got to do is collect the email, give it away for free, and collect all these email addresses, phone numbers that you're going to use to market and make money, which I'll, again, get to that here in a second. Um, but this is what we're sending people to. This is called MiniChat. Um, it's, a, it's a little you know, software that you can hook up to your Facebook page, and it allows you to collect emails, phone numbers, um, and also a messenger contact. So you're 
Facebook page, right? It has Messenger uh, tied to it, uh, as well as your Instagram. So check this out. He has, uh, for Dr. Burt, we've collected over a million contacts already. Where's it at? Right there. You know, in Instagram, we have over, like, close to 13,000. We have, what is that, 200,000 phone numbers and emails, and it just keeps growing. So if they don't answer their email, we'll send them a text. If they don't, then we'll send them a messenger, and we keep hitting them up <laughs> until you subscribe, unsubscribe. Yeah, good question. <laughs> so for people out of the country, what we do at the very beginning when they come into this channel here that's called ManyChat, we're surveying them, you know, and we can ask them right away, like, you know, what country are you from? We have kind of the same pro problem. It's a good problem to have. We have a lot of attention internationally with the uh, Spanish brand, the Natural Slim brand, and we have people from, you know, all, all countries. And so that's how we filter them. And if they say they're from here, then we send them down a, a certain road that we're asking them for their, e for their phone number. If they don't, we just ask them for their email because you can email anybody you know, uh, worldwide. So we don't ask for the phone number at that point. Yeah. Oh, one more thing I was gonna show you here is uh, an example of the 30-day fasting challenge. You can see uh, it was sent 117,000 times so far, and that's at the time of taking this um, screenshot, we collected over 8,000 emails and, and 50,000 phone numbers. So, and you know, when do you ever get a text that you don't open and engage and respond to? At least look at it. Maybe you don't engage, but like you look at it, right? So the phone number is way more valuable than the email. Okay, here's another example for uh, another one of our clients, Dr. Livinggood, and he likes to build his list by having people pay. So he likes to have people that, you know, are willing to take out their credit card and not, I mean, we do have some freebies as well, but this is kind of like our main focus for him. And it starts off with uh, like a membership that's only $27 a month, but actually a lot of people end up buying the, the, um, the lifetime deal for $9.97. And he gives you a whole bunch of stuff here, like monthly challenges, on-demand workouts, six master classes, lifestyle only coaching. So he provides a lot of value that doesn't cost him a lot because maybe he sits down and he creates like these uh, courses just one time, or the the uh, coaching work, uh, coaching you know, Zoom classes that he does or whatever. Maybe he only does that once a month, right? So again, figure out what your customers' problems are and try to solve them and uh, leverage you know things that you only have to do one time and then give it away for free. Here's another example of him doing this. Okay, so here's a video of him going to, I think this is Walmart, when he, yeah, to Walmart, to find the 10 healthiest pantry items. So it's a really good hook, and people, uh, and you know, you can tell that he's not like in an office, so it's kind of like a pattern interrupt. And um, you can see we reached 20,000 people, we got 374 comments on this one, 315 shares. But for this one, he's promoting his book. Now, it's free, quote unquote, and all we do is charge shipping. So we charge $7.95 for shipping, but you don't have to pay for the book, right? Maybe shipping only costs him, I don't know, five bucks, and the book you know, costs him another three, so he's covering everything, and he's trying to you know, break even, but he's collecting all this list. And if you can collect somebody that pays you, even if it's a dollar, it's at least somebody that's willing to pay for something, and I consider that more valuable than somebody that's just gonna give you an email for like a free you know, PDF, right? And, he, and Rob's going to touch on how that translates into really good, um, atten you know, translating the attention into really good numbers. Another example of Dr. Living Good um, giving away a free book, but this time he provided some extra value by giving you two exclusive free bonuses, and all it is, it's a VIP seminar recording and an audiobook. There's a lot of people like me, I don't want to read a book, I want an audiobook or whatever, right? And all he did is he just took his seminar and turned it into this, you know, audio recording. So it gives you the perception that, there's, that this is a lot more valuable and you're willing to pay, you know, the $7.95 a lot, a lot faster. And um, again, always be testing to see what works better. Uh, another example, Cloud9 Sheepskin. So for this, to collect emails and phone numbers and messenger, we're also sending them to, to ManyChat. We're doing a, a shoe quiz. So these guys sell like uh, sheepskin shoes, just kind of like similar to Uggs or something. But, and they have a whole lineup and whatnot. And we created this and it actually worked really, really well. We, we had tested a couple other things that weren't you know, taken off, but then this one really took off. 
and people just kind of want to know, like, what's the best shoe for me? <laughs> it's very easy. You just uh, send them into this messenger channel, like I was mentioning, ask them a couple of questions, and it's all automated, by the way. Again, that's a, a whole other workshop that we'll get into um, in the future to show you guys, like ManyChat, and how to set it up and how to use it. But I just want to show you the possibilities of once you have this attention on social media, you build your list by the, you know, the, using these different methods here. Okay, so this is what it looks like, sending people into the Messenger channel um, for your Facebook page. 43,000 contacts um, for Facebook, that's the Messenger. Uh, phone numbers, we collected 15,000 and 42,000 emails. Okay, so now we, so, so, so here's another example of the, doing the seminar, that, or the webinar online, seminar online is what we call it, but it's a webinar. And this time we ran ads. So now we're gonna start getting into like the section of how to really you know, take advantage of your audience and get there faster. Cause you can post or, you know, for free all day long and that's cool, that's fine. But getting there with ads gets you there so much faster. So <clears throat> we've been posting all of this stuff, these videos, these graphics, et cetera. People have been engaging with it and whatnot. And now we you know, offer a free webinar and then this is kind of what it results in. So we had uh, 61,000 people, you know, look at the, the page. 44 of those were unique, so some people came back, you know, a couple times, and then that turned into 21,000 emails, pretty much. So again, and then these are people that we're going to be, you know, nurturing, you know, with value content, and then sending them off to our stores or inviting them to talk to one of our consultants. Okay, so we'll get into the monetize section now. Examples. Uh, yeah, this is a good section. <laughs> um, examples of how to monetize on social media. So again, you could just put up some, you know, um, infographics about your, you know, your product with maybe a discount or no discount. It, they both work really well. And then um, this other example is if you have somebody willing to get on the phone and sell your products, then send them, you know, give them a phone number to talk to somebody over the phone. <clears throat> These are just more examples, kind of the same thing, just on Facebook. And then this one over here is on Instagram stories. So you want to be everywhere, not just Facebook. Facebook groups, Instagram stories, and the feed, and the stories, and the TikTok, you know, pretty much everywhere you can. You want to be omnipresent. Manuel talks a lot about that. Now, on TikTok, you guys saw at the beginning, I, I showed you how we had a ton of engagement, lots of views, lots of comments, et cetera. Well, they allow you to put all those people into a little bucket that you can now say, oh, these guys, I want to show them my ads. And some of the best converting ads are the ones that look like TikTok. So you can tell here, you know, it's just somebody kind of sharing their experience with the product. This is an unboxing video. So she's just kind of unboxing her package and she kind of goes through it and her thoughts on why she ordered it and the success that she's had with the brand, et cetera. And then we also just take the same video that we're already running on YouTube and we just put it on TikTok and it works, you know? <laughs> so if you already have something, you could just throw it on there and test it out and see how it works. But really the best performing kind of videos are like this style right here that look more like a TikTok. And by the way, those also translate very well when you run them on Facebook or Instagram. It's kind of just the new style that people, you know, are, are getting more and more used to. How many of you guys are on TikTok just by the way? Okay, cool. We asked that same question, I think it was last year when we did the TikTok uh, workshop and it was like less than half of that, so good. <clears throat> okay, and then um, for the list building part, we don't do it just you know, free or just posting organically. We also run ads and we're very aggressive at building this list because we know it translates very well into making more sales when you're collecting the phone numbers and the emails and you, you know, give them a link to shop, offer them some sort of a discount or whatever. So we get aggressive with the ads as well and collecting these leads and building that list. Now, Facebook also lets you um, connect your Shopify store, which is the next section I'm gonna get into here. And you can have a catalog on your store. So these are all the, well, not all, but these are some of the products that we have on there. And then all you gotta do is connect it to your Facebook and you can run this kind of style of ad. It's called um, dynamic catalog ads. 
And dynamic means that it's changing all the time. So as people are buying certain products or as a certain you know, person that Facebook thinks will do better, let's say with you know, the, the package versus the, the one product or whatever, they sift through all this data automatic, automatically <laughs> and, uh, and will show the best products that are gonna convert the best for, for your customer. So these are some of my favorite um, ads and they convert the best. You can see the results over here. Hopefully you guys can see that. But this is what we call purchase ROAS, so return on ad spend. You're spending a dollar, you're making five. You're spending a thousand, you're making 5,000. In this case, some of, the, some of these campaigns are spending a dollar and making six dollars back. Or you know, we have a six ROAS, 6.5, 5.63. If you average it all out, everybody that we're targeting, and you can see the names over here, some of them are repeat customers, some of them are brand new customers that all they did was engage with our social media and we're you know, just showing them ads for the first time, but they all convert. So, so that's, you know, that, that's uh, why you wanna focus on posting a lot because the more they engage with you, the bigger that audience that you can show your ads and spend more money and get more sales. You have a question? Oh, uh, okay, cool, no problem. <laughs> All right, so here's just another example, Cloud9 Sheepskin, same ad, this is a catalog ad. This, um, it's laid out like this here in this slide, but um, you know, when it's on your phone, you just kind of like swipe through it and, and uh, hopefully one of these catches your attention. You click on it and it takes you directly to that um, landing page or that product page on your store. It doesn't take you to like the home page. That's another tip for you guys. Don't like send somebody straight to a home page. You want to send them directly to the product that they click on or that they saw on um, your social media because otherwise they get dispersed. They kind of like land on your page. They're like, where, where do I go? What do I click on? Like, what do I do? And then they just end up bouncing out of there. <clears throat> and this is what it results for them. The, again, this is return on ad spend. So they're spending a dollar to make, you know, almost four back. And for them, you know, a sale is um, a lot higher than some of the other ones I was showing you. So people are spending more like $150 average order. So they're doing very well. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get into the next section. Anybody has any questions on social media for now? <clears throat> you have a question. deny your post. Yeah. So he's talking about, let me just repeat it for the camera too. So he, he was saying that he's been growing his uh, TikTok channel. You have over 800,000 yeah, followers 800, now? Likes. That's good. Like, oh, 800,000 likes? 53,000 followers. That's good. I remember you were here uh, a few two. workshops ago. Maybe it was a TikTok one that you yeah, came to as well. Like yeah, you had 8,000. So that's great. But you've been getting flagged now with, the, oh, yeah, with every post that you do. I, Yes. Yes. So he. Yeah. No. Forget. Forget it. Trying to get a hold of like customer care or support. Like it's very very hard. Actually, you know, Meta, uh, Facebook's coming out with paid uh, blue check mark that you can put like so you can look like a verified person or whatever, and it's gonna be like eleven or fifteen bucks a month, and then they're gonna give you access to be able to get support supposedly. So we'll see how that goes. But just to answer your question, yeah, they're copying Twitter, yeah, they're copying Twitter for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to see your your videos because I I would want to know. But just as a general thing, why something would get flagged is you know obviously it goes against their guidelines. What's their guidelines? Well, it's like reading a you know legal contract. So good luck. But in general, they don't like you know things that are hateful, things that are very political, things that maybe even show violence. I'm not saying that that's what you're doing. I'm just saying like in general, that's the kind of stuff. Like social media likes it when you're very happy, where everything's sunshine and rainbows, and you can spread your message in two different ways, right? So you want to let's say you have a um, a product. Instead of focusing on the pain points, you just focus on the after. This is what you're gonna feel like. This is what it's like after you've taken my supplement for you know, a few months and you, know, you show the guy kind of like happy and refreshed and stuff like that. So that's what I recommend. I've 
ran into you know situations like that so many times and especially on ads so just keep everything more like you know happy on the on the happy spectrum and usually you won't have a problem yeah, but for you we'll have to like dive a little bit deeper after yeah, and to show me yeah oh cool Oh, I remember now. Yeah, so he, he posts a lot about um, health. Like, it's like a health product, re, re, health related or whatever. And that's another thing that they can get a little bit sensitive about. And I'm telling you, because I have so much experience on the supplement side of things. So just focus more, again, not on I had this big pain point or I had this big, you know, I don't know, thing going on, like a negative thing. Just focus on after more than anything. But we'll get to it after. Yeah, so for Shopify guys, let's get into the next section. How do you, you know, make money? How do you take all this social media, this funnel that you've been creating, and now you're sending people to Shopify? The first thing I wanna talk about is Shopify apps. Here's some of my favorite apps that you can use to make your store better, convert more sales, and just, you know, overall get more money out of each visitor that, um, that you're getting. So the first one is called the Booster Page speed, page speed Optimizer. This is a free app, so it's cool. Um, when it's free, it's, it's always good, right? It improves your chances of conversion by making your website pages feel like they load almost instantly. This is a big pain point with people when they're shopping online. If something doesn't load instantly or almost instantly, you get a lot of people bouncing out. If you ever shop on Amazon, which I know we all do, just notice how fast you know, their stuff is there. And that's really like the standard. Shopify tends to be a little bit um, slower just from the get-go, like when you first launch it. So I recommend this app right here, and I'll show you some results. Check this out. When we installed the PageSpeed Optimizer, we were at 2.16% conversion, and in a few days, we jumped to 247 Now, it might not seem like a whole lot, like uh, percentage-wise, but when you get tens of thousands of people visiting your store every day or hundreds of order every day, that little small percentage makes a huge difference at the end of the month and then imagine, you know, it starts to compound every month. So anything you can do to like make your, your site faster or focus on like the conversion part of it, you know, you're gonna end up making a lot more money from all these visitors that you're already getting. The next one is called One Click Upsell. This is from a company called Zipify. They call it OCU, One Click Upsell. You guys ever heard about uh, funnels and the upsells and the downsells and all that. This makes it really easy. It already has templates for you. And again, this is another way to get more money out of each visitor that's coming to your website. And here's an example of what it looks like once they're, you can set this pop, this is like a little pop-up that shows up. You can set it up so that it pops up when they're in the cart or as soon as they add to cart, right? So you can test that out and see which one works better. But this is what is um, recommended, because you can add only one product, but I recommend adding several products. And what we've tested also, if you add in, instead of adding like a huge kit, you, what you're trying to get like people to buy, maybe they bought like one, again, supplements, right? They, maybe they bought one bottle and you're like, well, here's this huge kit for 350 bucks. That doesn't work as well as offering, you know, something that's like 30 bucks. $8, $12, little things that are add-on that complement very well to you know, what they already have in their cart. But you get a lot more from using this thing. So here's one store that's using it. Just from using this, we made an extra $20,582. Another store, we made $911,000 you know, extra dollars that we wouldn't have made if we didn't install this app. And then this one made $1.5 a uh, million extra. And this is from the upsells in the beginning and then what they also call the upsells at the end. Like, you know, you've already purchased, you're checking out, but they're like, wait, 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 do you also want this other thing? You know, and if they say, no, I don't want it, wait, 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 what if I give you like an extra 20% off, right? You can do this with that, with that app right there. <clears throat> the other one is called SMS Bump, okay? I was talking a lot about the list building and collecting emails and whatnot. This is one of the major reasons why I like to do that. SMS Bump lets you send text messages and it integrates with your store so you could do really cool stuff like if uh, they're already on your list, you already collected their phone number, maybe they purchased from you one time or you just collected their phone number, you added it to your store. This app will know if somebody comes and they just shop around but they didn't, do, they didn't even add anything to your cart or anything, it'll detect them 
and then it'll send them a text message. Wait, you were here and you forgot to buy this. Here's a link. Come back. Right? So it's pretty cool. And this one, by the way, it didn't say how much it was. There's a free plan available, but then you just pay per text message. You can get it. I mean, if you sign up like we did for a whole like big volume of, uh, you get it for like less than a cent, I believe. But but it's usually about three cents per message. Like it, it's nothing compared to the the top the type of ROI that you can get. 16x ROAS or ROI. We spent two hundred thousand dollars so far in this store, and we made three million dollars from using that app right there on that particular store. Maybe you don't have that much revenue or that much traffic. Maybe you're just starting out. It still works the same as far as the. Uh, it still works the same as far as the you know the the rev the ROI. Maybe you only spend five dollars, but you'll get you know a couple hundred dollars back, right? Uh, the next one's called Zipify. It's also the same company that makes the the one-click upsell. But these guys also have an app that lets you do uh, page builder, so you can create smarter funnels, landing pages product pages, and you don't need a designer for this because they have a whole bunch of templates that you can just tap into and just plug in, play your, you know, your images and your text. This one is $67 a month. You could try it for free for 14 days and see how it does for you, but we've had really good success with it as well. I mean, it pays for itself, like maybe one or two you know, sales a month and you pay for, pay for the app. And, but I'm telling you, it's going to convert a lot better than that, it, especially if you already use the, uh, the templates that they provide. So this is what it looks like. Like this is somebody that works you know, with us that's not a designer. They didn't go off of Shopify to build this. They were just building all this within this little app right here. That was kind of like the home page. I'm going to show you like as you scroll down. So you can see you know, we added 15% off. Then we added you know, some text. Uh, we added a couple images. A little bit more, and you know, along the way, you can add buttons so that if people are scrolling, you're always getting them to, you know, click and shop. Okay, more images. So this looks pretty nice, right? And without needing a designer, and it works really, really well. So then, finally, at the end, we add also some uh, some reviews, right? So it makes it look nice and social proof. People are buying this. Okay, so the next thing is that you need to take advantage if you have a Shopify store is um, updating your store with blogs and articles. So you want to add content to your store because your store, like any other website on, on, out there, uh, will rank on Google. And the only way for you to rank on Google and get all this free traffic that Google can send you is to have content so Google can go in there and read it and know what, what your store is about, what's your product's about, like who's your customer, right? And, and so you start feeding it all these different you know, articles or blogs or whatever so you can start ranking better. And if you don't know what to write about or you don't um, have you know, an idea of like, what to you know, start writing about, go to this website. It's called answerthepublic.com. If you want to write that down. You have a mic? Or, yeah. Answerthepublic.com. And all you got to do is enter a topic, brand, or product, basically like a one or two word you know, type of query that kind of describes, maybe I'll, uh, like if I was Dr. Berg, I would type in, let's say, keto diet. And what it does is it gives you all the questions that people are asking already online about the keto diet. It kind of goes through that. I don't know if you've ever seen like when you're searching and then there's a little section on Google that says people also ask. And it gives you like other suggestions or whatever. All those questions are in here. And you can tap into it and write a blog post about every single one, or if it's very closely related, maybe you write one blog post and you answer you know, five or 10 questions in one post, right? But you need to have that content in there so you can start ranking you know, better on Google. And again, you're gonna get all this free traffic from Google. So this one was how to care for your sheepskin boots, tips and tricks from Cloud9 Sheepskin. And this is a little bit small, honestly, I would make it a little bit bigger. But, but yeah, these, these are blogs that live on that website that, again, we capture a lot of emails, sales, and everything else from you know, ranking on Google. <clears throat> I also told you that you can use your YouTube videos and you can transcribe them. That's something that Dr. Berg likes to do a lot. You can see it even has like the timestamps from his uh, YouTube video. So like, what's cool about this is that you're going to get a, first you're going to get a backlink to your YouTube channel. So it helps with SEO, these backlinks, right? 
Another thing is people can just watch your video right there if they don't want to read, right? And that counts as a view for him. And it also, it's a better user experience. Like some people don't like to read. And then again, he, all you got to do is, you know, take the transcript and make a blog post out of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's on his, uh, actually for him, he has two, two sites, the main site, a bunch of content, a bunch of uh, mainly content. And then he tied his Shopify store right there with it. But same idea applies, like this, this is for your Shopify store. Okay, so here's some more examples of just, you know, some blogs, help your skin glow, and you can get some of these images, whether it's like, um, uh, like royalty-free style images or whatever, images of yourself, or if you wanna make a video, put it up there, you know, just more examples there. Okay, so uh, here's another company that we were helping with um, that they sell dog treats, and that's a huge, you know, you know, space, a huge niche. You can you can talk about certain, you know, dog breeds, dog problems. Like it, it goes on forever, and all you need is a little bit of time, or pay someone, you know, to make these blogs for you. Or you guys got to make sure that you come back to another workshop I'm gonna be doing on how to use AI. So use these you know, robots to write a lot of this content for you and all you gotta do is just edit it a little bit, make it, a, you know, you know, kind of give it your, your quality check. But you know, these, um, these, these softwares that I'll show you in another workshop, it's gonna show you how to cut the time by like 80%. <clears throat> okay, so the last section of this Shopify is email and SMS marketing. I just wanna show you that once you get people onto your website, and again, whether they've purchased from you or they are simply just seeing maybe like some sort of a freebie on your website in exchange for an email or, or a phone number, you can market to them and bring them back to your store for sales. This is a screenshot from one of the email softwares that we use. It's called Clavio or Clavio. I don't know, people say it both ways, I guess. But check this out. This uh, has made us an extra $10 million in revenue. This is lifetime, so this is over years and years of, of using it, right? But um, we have a section just for people that abandon the cart. So, and, and, and even then from there, we'll kind of spread it out. If you abandon the cart for this item or that item, you know, or this other item, if you didn't open the emails, we'll set it up to send you a different one with maybe a discount code, but not on the first ones. Like you can get just really creative. It can get very deep. <laughs> But um, you can see here, you know, just from a, people that abandoned the cart and we recover $84,000 just from sending them a couple of emails that it's not going to cost you a lot of money. Oh, and then we have like thank you emails. So these are people that purchase the supplement and we just want to follow up and say thank you. And then, by the way, this is how you use it so they can have like the best success because in the supplement world, if they come and they purchase two times from you, it's eight times more likely that they'll stick with you. So we're always trying to provide a lot of value to the first time customers and, and get them to come back. Um, for emails, an average open rate that you'll see is about 36, sometimes a little bit less depending on how good you are at your subject lines because that's the first thing that they'll see. But on average, you should be getting you know, about 36% of the people and that's why I love um, SMS or, or text message marketing because you get such a better response which I'll show you here in a second. But here's just some of the examples of the emails that we're sending. You can make them long, you can make them short, you can make them very graphical. You don't have to write a lot of content for it. We figured out that providing a, a lot of like extra content and value in ours has worked the best, but that's not the case for um, every store that we manage. Sometimes you just have to include a, a product you know, image and maybe with like some benefits you know, um, kind of pointed out along the image and that works very well. Sometimes you have to offer a pretty good discount in order to get people back. So you just have to play around with that. <clears throat> Not that one. Okay, so this is what the text messages look like. This is for a couple of our customers here. So examples, Nutriflare. Uh, hey Giovanni, learn the, f the 14 of the best foods for the ketogenic diet and we're sending them to the blog. So we don't always, you know, sell, we're, we're sending them back to get more and more value because, you know, going back to what I was saying, they'll trust you a lot more and you'll be able to convert, you know, the sales a lot easier. This one says, try this new apple cider vinegar and keto supplement and experience the difference. Save 10% off by using this code. So just 
you know, some examples here. Hurry, offer, end soon. So this is something that was a little bit more like a um, deadline on this. And that looks like it was probably like the second or third text message that we had sent him. Um, here's another one, Cloud9. Hey, you know, Christmas sale ends tonight. So when it's a big sale like that around a big holiday, we will get more aggressive. And uh, we'll send you, you know, five to 10 different um, text messages depending on, like if it's Black Friday, forget it. You're gonna be flooded with, uh, with our text message marketing. <laughs> well, you have to, you know, there's so much noise when it's like Black Friday, everybody's going crazy promoting and whatnot. So you sometimes have to really push to get past, you know, everybody else. But here's the results real quick. All right, so this is the screenshots from using the SMS Bump app. So this is text message marketing. Um, we spent $35 to make $684. Pretty good return. And that's what the, um, the text message looks like there. Okay, here's another one. On this one, we spent $1,100 to make $10,000. But you'll see, like, the, the, the screenshots are just all the same. Very, spend very little and get very good return. Spent $60 to make um, $2,000 almost. Okay, so this is the, the one I was talking about, the browse abandonment. So this is people just browsing your products and we have them on file. We have their phone number and we, we know that, hey, you know, thanks for visiting the store. Um, the, the product that you just saw is one of the most uh, sold and its um, inventory is you know, running out. I'm trying to translate at the same time. Um, also, if your order is $49 or more, your shipping is free. And in, in our case, we always give them the phone number because we do have people on the phone willing to sell. But you can just give them the, the, the link back to your store. And this is all automatic with, with this, you know, when you're using this app. So for this one, we spent $55 to make $29,000. This one works, works really, really well. Because people don't expect it. They're like, wait a minute, I didn't, put, I didn't add anything to card. I didn't give you my phone number or whatever. But it was already on file. <clears throat> OK, here's another example. Uh, spent $60 to make $3,000. Spent $348 to make $19,000. You know, $19, this one's welcoming new subscribers as they're coming to the store. We're collecting phone numbers. Sometimes we'll give them a guide. Sometimes we'll say, hey, give me your phone number. I'll give you 20% off. Like, you, you just have to kind of get creative, again, and test to see what works. But the main thing is that you guys should know is that collecting these phone numbers and using them translates into very, very good ROI. Um, shipping confirmation. So when somebody, you know, buys something, we're texting them. You know, it, um, I don't know about you guys, but somebody calls me, I'm like, usually don't answer. 99% of the time, I don't answer. But if you text me, then I'll reply back. Like, I'm always multitasking, doing things, right? So text, that's why text messaging works so well. And even just texting people and letting them know, hey, here's your tracking number, or hey, you're, you know, your package is on the way, or whatever, that's good customer service. It's going to cost you a couple cents, like I said, three cents maybe, to send these. But it translates to spending $51, and they come back, and they shop for even more. So they spent another $2,000 with us. It's awesome. I think you guys get the point, right? <laughs> All right, so for the last section here, we're gonna have Am, uh, Am Amazon Rob is what we call him, our Amazon director, <laughs> Rob. Talk about uh, Amazon, come on up, man. All right, good. take Am it away. We're good? I think we're good. Fantastic, that was like uh, a uh, now we're whole, good. like master's degree in, in like an hour. That's pretty impressive, so well done. I'm just anyway. scratching the surface. <laughs> Thank you. So, People here are Amazon sellers. I know I've got a couple people in the audience, a couple more, maybe a future one, one day. Okay, good, excellent. Um, so I'm gonna, how interested are you guys in like the actual details of how this executes on Amazon? One guy, very, two couple people, okay, good. Excellent, I just wanna make, five hands. Fantastic, I just wanna kinda, kinda get a bit of a, an idea. Um, on the audience, yeah, exactly right. So, um, obviously, there's a lot of activity that goes along off Amazon, and there's so many other platforms that all these things are happening. So I view my job on Amazon to, to take that attention, and I have to monetize it. Right? There, there are ways to get attention on Amazon, but there's nowhere near the amount of uh, email marketing that we can do, retargeting that we can do, all those features that Amazon, Jeff, Jeff Bezos keeps his, his clients, right? Like he wants to be able to monetize his people, and we're just like paying a little bit of a, of a commission to sell to his audience. 
So uh, first of all, I want to show you guys how we've been very, very successful launching brands on Amazon through the use of social media. Oops, wrong direction. But it, it relates, because I'm going to relate a, a lot of what he talked about to how this works on Amazon. There you go. So this shows you how, when, where's the? So when we, when we check, when we're looking at the engagement on social media, we, we, we can correlate uh, increases in traffic to increases in sales. So specifically, Dr. Berg's account basically 3 x over the past year. And it started when a specific video went sort of viral just before Christmas 2021, 20 years, correct? Uh, on, on gallbladder. And ever since then, you'll see the, the graph just, just continually goes, and we can correlate to these spikes in, in traffic. So again, we can track and see a correlation. This is a new brand that we actually launched very So it's only been active on Amazon for about two months. It made his first sale like January 7th, I think is the exact date, January 8th. And he's already done $13,000 in sales on one product. Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So he only has one product. Uh, that, that's live on Amazon. He has a few more on, on, on the Shopify store. Um, but he, when he launched, he already had an audience that he had, had captured through his content. And then he starts doing Facebook Lives and things to promote the Amazon brand. And this drives a lot of initial traffic. So now, like a normal brand would launch on Amazon and you have a, a little trickle of sales and you kind of do a few tweaks here and there and optimize things. But I'm able to start with 2K in weekly sales right off the bat. Like, when I know I'm doing a good job, you'll, you'll see keywords related to the brand itself increasing. And so we have different apps that we can use. And you guys probably can't read this because I realize it's really, really small. So this is Dr. Berg. We have 10,000 people per month specifically typing in his name on Amazon. I have uh, 37,000 people searching for keywords related to his brand specifically. So that, that's just like one person every five minutes is the things how, that, how that, that, that calculates. That's looking for him specifically. The conversion rate on that search is incredible because that person is already a sole customer and they're looking, they're going on Amazon to buy that product. Natural Slim, same thing here. Frank Suarez, we have 2,600 uh, searches for his name on Amazon. We have almost 20,000 searches related to their products. The conversion rate on these is incredible. I actually turned off almost all ads related to Frank and all these things because I knew that that customer was already sold on the product. They were just going on Amazon to buy it. So why would I pay an ad to, to, for that person? Right? I've, already, I've already sold them through my social media content, so why would I pay Amazon again for the same person? This is Dr. Living Good who we launched recently. Uh, he's only been on Amazon for about six months. I'll show you more about him later. Uh, the search volume for his keyword, Dr. Living Good Supplements, is up 10%. 1,800 search volume. 2,700 monthly searches related to his product specifically. So as you were talking, I was like, oh, I should say this. And I, I was like, all these <laughs> new things came up. So um, we manage a lot of brands that sell on Amazon and sell on their website. Like usually Shopify is our preferred platform. There's uh, the traffic on Shopify on your own website, you have a lot more control over. On Amazon, you're really not, you're selling to people, but they're not really your customers. They're, they're just customers, right? So the list building activities is much more difficult, but, we, but there are ways to do it. Um, the uh, SMS is basically non-existent. But when you guys have good lists and I can use those lists, it helps me tremendously. Exactly. Now, it also depends, are we, are we working with a brand that's already launched on Amazon and they're trying to convert into Shopify so they have more secured in their business? Or are we launching a brand that is uh, the other way around, they're already very stable on their own website and they're deciding to go on Amazon for the first time. So if they're already on Amazon and they're building their own website, we can import those reviews from Amazon and we can send them to Shopify and it makes the website look extremely established from the get-go. So that's one way that we're able to right because you have that social proof, proof. So like that instant, you know, uh, credibility. It's all, it's there. Like yep. There's how many there? Like thousand, a thousand reviews, hundred, 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 whatever. Totally. So it converts right away. Totally. 
And these are real reviews. I mean, you're just importing them from, from Amazon. Totally, and there's apps that you can use to import that over. What do you think? Yeah. So another way, way, thing that we do is using in, either inserts or QR codes on the products. So as I said, the traffic, if you're using Amazon as, a, as an acquisition channel for customers, then how can we take that person and, and continue the conversation in, on our own terms off Amazon? So um, you have to be careful with these things that you're not uh, violating Amazon's terms of service, but they do let you uh, put your website on, on products. Uh, and as long as you're uh, providing value to their customers, then Amazon will permit it. So one thing we do is a, is a QR code. This QR code specifically goes to a funnel that they've already done that's very successful, and so I can just copy his homework and say, mm -hmm. great, I'm gonna attach this to my, to my thing, and I'm gonna send him, I'm gonna feed him more, more people, because I know the more people he has, and he's gonna retarget them, and they're gonna come back on Amazon, and it, it builds the whole thing. But what we do with this, just to you know, jump in, is that we go back to what I was talking about. We collect first party data. Yeah. So all these people are on Amazon, but I don't know them. I don't know have their contact data. I can't ever contact them and try to sell them more and stay cause, right, over like the, the sales uh, process. Yep. So we go from here and we say, hey, um, awaken your metabolism, scan here to find out how. So we set them to a funnel where we do a metabolism quiz and yeah, we're, we're finding out like symptoms that you have or whatever and then we present you with a whole you know, thing about your metabolism. Yeah. And then from there, we say, oh, you can talk to somebody about this or you can you know, shop on our site. Yeah. But once we get that phone number and email, you know, it's over. We're, it's we're, 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 they're not getting off our list until they And this gives us data about who's something. buying on Amazon. <laughs> like there's, there's customers I've talked to, uh, I've had been lucky to be able to talk to specific people that were buying on Amazon and they'll, they'll very often see social media posts and then they go on Amazon. And I want to be able to figure out who those people are yeah. so we get more data about them. Yeah. Which it's just the way it is. Like, the, like, English, Spanish it's just thing. the way it yeah. is. Like, it, people will see your ad, you're spending money on it, and you're sending them to, um, to, to Shopify, but they get out of there and they open up the Amazon app and they go and shop over there, right? Yeah. I do that. I don't I know. Do too. I <laughs> that, that's, what, that's just what happens. Yeah. So, you know, th you know putting pr uh, processes like this in place, then you can collect that first party data go. again. Perfect. Good. So, as I said, we, we can retarget people once we get them into the funnel. Uh, it's much cheaper that the Amazon, you, you're paying a 15% commission off the top to sell the traffic. Shopify is 3% or, or less. Just for credit card processing, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, is that all you pay? Yeah. Good. Well, you, you got to pay the monthly you know, fee for the store, but like you don't pay them a, pro like you don't There's give no them any kind of referral sales. fee, no commission, no nothing. They yeah. don't take, just credit card processing. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. that, that traffic, not only is it cheaper, like probably what I meant with this is like, it's more valuable and it, it's less expensive. All right, good. So the customer, the customers on Amazon, on average, are ordering just over one product, and usually the, the average order value is about thirty bucks mm. for me on Amazon. Now thirty five right now. I think it's like one point one, one point two average orders. That's units per one person buying. So I'm tracking how many, how many, how how big their purchase is on Shopify. It's same like same brand. Twenty bucks. One hundred twenty bucks. Same brand. Yeah. So so on average, that's times. what they're spending on our Shopify store versus Amazon. Yeah. Because we can do a better job of presenting more value to them. I can't use one-click upsells. Yeah, yeah. You I can't, can't use all those. You cool saw apps. how much we collected extra from using that one app. <laughs> <laughs> totally, so totally. So it, it is a matter of there are different platforms that have their own nuances, and it is important to understand the differences. Uh, I have seen Shopify stores built by Amazon sellers that look like Amazon listing pages, and that doesn't really work. <laughs> doesn't convert very well. Um, and the other way around. So it is a different, a different uh, part of the customer journey. People on Amazon are looking to buy stuff, right? They're, they're there to, buy, to purchase something. All right, good. So, uh, you know, Jorge's given us a lot of information. Uh, I've kind of touched on a couple of things of how I've seen uh, all of this work that they're doing and how I've seen the sales on Amazon go up. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, we're all here to make sales, right? That, that, that's ultimately what we're trying to accomplish. So this is a brand that we launched six months ago. They made their first sale in August 2022. He did have a successful brand off Amazon. And in, within six months, six and a half months, we broke $1 million in total sales. It's 25 Ooh. products, a couple of big ones, and a lot of that is a lot of organic content. He has funnels, he has email campaigns going on. Zero of that traffic told anybody that he was on Amazon. Zero. We, we weren't trying to send traffic to Amazon. That's just what happens when you're generating them's attention. 
and Amazon is where half of the e-commerce sales are going, and it is the first place people go to to find a product to buy a product. And so when they generate attention in, in these other channels, I'm able to monetize on that. So I just kind of want to show that to you guys. About yeah, again, what's it's like possible. what I just said. People are going to go to Amazon no matter what to search for your product. So yeah. you want to be on there. Yeah. But you're right. He already had thousands of subscribers, tens of thousands of subscribers. We launched his TikTok first video, got 500,000 views. He got you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers right away, you know, similar story to yours. And people are interested in his, in his brand and they go to his website and, or like you said, they're on his email list and things like that. Yeah. But it's a natural process that people go to Amazon and search to see if you're there or not. Yeah. So it, it, no matter what the strategy is for a business, if they're selling a physical product, I highly recommend you go on Amazon, at least to have the, the page built out. And it's not, it's not that much effort to build it out, but because it, it gives credibility to the brand and it gives you another channel to capture audiences, um, no matter what the strategy is. So um, definitely those are the two major platforms and the two ways we can generate revenue. So I hope that uh, showed you guys a little more of like why we do this and at the end of the day, what the intention is. I hope that helped. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, guys, so we're gonna do Q&A. If anybody has a question, we have a mic up here if you wanna, here, I'll, just, I'll just run it to you actually. <laughs> What's the question? Question yeah. back here. That's <laughs> all good. All right, so probably the AI is very much of interest. Anything sure. that's oh, yeah. 80% less, right? So just a note on that. And then you mentioned transcribing videos into text. Do you use an app for that? I mean, my Surrey is not going to catch up, keep up at yes. all. <laughs> um, what do you use for that? I use my, okay, I thought it was off. <laughs> Uh, we use a software that's called Descript, and it basically transcribes. It makes a script out of your video. But it's really cool because um, it's also a little bit of an AI, if you want to say that, because you can tell it to remove all the filler words. So like today, I probably said like or um 50,000 times. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> but it will remove all that with a click of a button. Oh, so it makes awesome. it super easy to edit, and it, it gives it to you in a format that looks like a Word doc, let's say. Your whole um, transcript is there. So if you don't like something you said in the video, you just highlight, delete, boom, the video is edited too. So your transcript and your video are edited that way. So it makes it really easy. Descript awesome. is what it's called. Love it. That's the mic, right? yeah, I'm pretty go. loud. There you go. But can you use Descript to do the entire video or just mainly in the editing in certain spots? Yeah, entire video. Yeah. Like, like, are you saying to create the video? I did. I, or yeah. I, podcast. Actually, like, almost like a caption. Is that, was that what you're talking you about? Can add, you can add, you can take that. No, what it does is it transcribes. That's the main thing that it does. It transcribes your video, right? But then it gives it to you right there, like a, like a Word doc. Imagine like a Word doc, right? It's all there, the text. That's awesome. Yes. And then you can say, oh, okay, we'll add all this text as caption. So now it adds it to your video. And then you can edit it, make it whatever color you want, different fonts, different sizes, whatever. And then it, it has the captions right there on your video, what we call burned in captions. So it's there, it's not part of an external, like YouTube putting up captions or whatever. It's like, it's there no matter what. Okay. Which are super important because 80% of videos are watched uh, on silent. I don't know if you guys knew oh. that. So <laughs> oh, wow. 80% wow. of videos on social media are watched on silent. Probably. Oh, I didn't know that. More than half are watched uh, at night while you're in bed trying to, you know, go to sleep before, before you go to sleep, you're there oh, wow. uh, scrolling and you don't want to make a lot of noise. I don't know. But that's the stat. 80% of the videos are watched in silence. So, so the captions are very, very important. Wow. And then I one, one more thing. Not, not only are they important just for, because they're on, um, uh, on silent, but these platforms now have gone really smart and they're reading this text that's on there and now they're learning about your video so that they learn who to show it at, uh, who to show it to because they know what the video is about that way oh wow so it's very important to be adding the captions that's awesome can you hold the mic a bit closer oh sorry yeah. i just had a question for you on amazon sure. so it was like well it was during the whole covid deal yeah and um my amazon got shut off Oh. because they said like I broke rules or something and then I asked yeah. them what it was and they never could say and yeah. they never responded yeah. but it's been shut off ever since and even like when I tried to go on there anyways I was just kind of curious like is there a recommendation like who I would talk to now that people exist again so <laughs> I mean it's just like so can you access the account at all 
I mean, I've tried even creating a new account, and it says and they'll, like they'll you've been you. you've been like permanently banned. Permanently banned. The and, only it, way and, and 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 yeah. I was and I had like a perfect five star, and and I don't even know like what happened. It was like overnight. Wow. It was just and and but I asked, and I've met like probably over a thousand people on social media where they said they had the same problem. They had yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, you too. It happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's and I can't figure out how to get back on. It, it, if you are I'm able like, to contact one of the Amazon reps, then you can make a case. At least first figure out why, like what the issue was, uh, and then you can figure out what, what the handling would be. Um, with it being that long ago, I don't know how successful you'll be, but it's definitely worth trying. Yeah. Sometimes it's a mistake, which is a lot of the time. And Legitimately. sometimes you, you might have said like a medical claim, because yeah. I know you're like kind of in the health space. It actually space. wasn't the health thing. I was uh, selling cell phone chargers. Oh, cell phone chargers. And what happened is... Oh, sorry. I was selling cell phone chargers, and what happened was uh, there was a company that was selling like twenty five thousand a month, and I sold like a thousand in like my first day, like launching, oh, because wow. I had it priced like two dollars less than them. Yeah. You're and then, the um, and all of a sudden, I had twenty one star <laughs> reviews saying that the glass was broken, and I was like, "There's no glass." Yeah. Oh, the metal shards. It was like a BB gun coming out, and I was like, "What the?" Yeah. And I'm all reading these weird reviews, and yeah. then I was like, "That couldn't have shut it down." But well, then, you, you know what and it is? so is they you're, attacked you're, me. You're basically, you're in one of the <laughs> most like yeah. competitive <laughs> spaces on Amazon, and it gets you know yeah. really dirty. Like there's people that will. Uh, have fake accounts report it as you know something like harmful. They'll leave you bad reviews. There's a lot of money on there, right? And so people do weird things yeah. when money is involved, and that's yeah. what happened. It's it's been it could be that. TikTok it could be too. something else. Yeah, yeah. They, they've TikTok. been trying to on TikTok. That. I was just on a live, and they said this person showing ammunition, and I was talking about health. Yeah. And I was like, ammunition. I, and then I sent an appeal, and then it comes back, and it says, after watching, you're not allowed to have it, weapons. And I'm like, who watched it? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know. It's really weird. But yeah. I was just curious, like, what you do. When yeah. You get, like, a trick bag like that. You just got to contact, contact them. That's what they say, yeah. Well, we'll do there, and then we'll go to Jesus. So this has been really helpful. Thank you. Good. I had a question now at the beginning where you showed that young couple doing their candies. Yes. And you made a comment on quick and rapid changes to videos because of people's attention. Yeah. Yes. Can, uh, and I had one more question after this. Can you, can you elaborate on that a bit more? Yes. So I noticed that, or, and I, I learned and I tested, so I noticed now that the attention span of people is very, very short these days, right? Especially on a platform like TikTok where it's just, you know, the whole reason you're there is just scroll, 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 right? It's not like YouTube where you go there and you're searching for a particular thing and you, you know, you're gonna pay attention a little bit longer. TikTok is just like mindless almost, right? So you have to have a lot of cuts, a lot of changes, and that is what holds people's attention. The motion creates the same effect. So at the start of the video, let's say I'm going to take a video of Rob or something, I might walk around here, you know, something like that. But just that little bit of motion, it, it's kind of like a pattern interrupt, right? Everybody else, they're, they're, they're on TikTok, everybody else is just kind of sitting there talking yeah. to the camera, and then here you come all of a sudden and you're like, maybe running up to the phone or something, and you're like, wait, 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 don't scroll, let me tell you about this or whatever, right? It's like a pattern interrupt. So, so that's on a, uh, the TikTok social media platform. I mean, yes, I was talking about TikTok, but that is applying to everything now. That's like social media, that's the style. Even, even on YouTube, yeah, they recommend it. Even on YouTube. Maybe a little bit to... longer, but if you watch like the YouTube channels, even the ones that are like just a guy talking, they'll cut to other images, cut to statistics, they'll flash things on the screen. Yep. You know, maybe uh, it's more like eight seconds instead of five seconds, uh, but it's the same. Say. Oh, yeah. if, if you go and watch YouTube, um, Dr. Berg's YouTube channel, you'll get a really good example of what he does. His audience is more like, I think it's about 50 to 65, or maybe like 45 to 65, somewhere around there, right? So my point in that is like, maybe they're not wanting to be like so quick. In fact, we've got a comment on uh, Dr. Living Goods who has the same yeah. audience. They're like, whoa, you're making me dizzy. Like, what's up with this editing, right? So we go back to the old way. Not every three seconds, we actually switch it up every five or eight seconds, and it's a slow transition from one thing to another. So let's say he's talking about, I don't know, you know, coconut oil or something. We'll slide in a picture of a coconut oil as his audio keeps going, and then it's like back to him. And then he talks about whatever, you know, something else, and we'll put a picture or a video of that. I've seen that on his videos. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now you'll start to notice that even more. <laughs> yeah, thank you. The other question I have, and this is a little more of a broad stroke, is 
Uh, you mentioned multiple different, at the beginning of your seminar, types of content to be publishing. Yeah. You had blogs, videos, FAQs, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, in what order would you say is for a new business starting out with a new product line? Yeah. Unknown, completely blank. The best slate. thing that you can post is video. That's the one that's going to get you the most reach. That's the one that the platforms love because it gets more engagement because you can show more of what you're trying to communicate. Um, and so those are the, that's the best one to start off with if you're willing to get on camera. If you're not, then you, know, you can start off with camera away type video. So let's say that, you know, let, let's say if you have an e-commerce, which is the, you know, what we're talking about today. Are you ready to do it? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. No, I'm just saying, like, let's say you, you're selling out. something, right? And not, not a service. You're not like a plumber or an HVAC or something, right? You sell this, then you have your phone pointing at it, and then you're talking about it. Like, I think I showed you, oh, I showed you the unboxing video of the girl, but we have other videos that we've tested where the camera's kind of like over the shoulder and all you see is the, pe the person's hands and they're talking like unboxing and that works too. So, so th th that would be the way to go, video. Okay. Short video too, less than 60 seconds. Tracking, thank you. And you can yeah. use that Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, the same content and get repurposed. Okay. Thank I you. think we got Jesus. You got two questions, right? Yep, two from questions online. from uh, YouTube. First one is from uh, Alex Beecroft. Hopefully, I said their name right. The question is, what if you're able to disclose it? <clears throat> what is the name of the company that went to a million dollars in six months? Doctor Living Good. There you his, go, Doctor Living called, Good. His brand is called Living Good Daily. There you go, Living Good Daily. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, the second question from Julian. Ask, hey. I'm very new to this whole selling on Amazon and Shopify, and I need help knowing where to start. I was curious is it, if it is easier to start with Shopify or Amazon. So they're easier. They're, That's a good question. <laughs> they're different platforms. So in my opinion, it's Amazon. Would you agree with that? I Just think Amazon might be easier because the customers are already there, right? Yeah. So all you got to do is kind of like getting, you know, standing in a stream or something, right? You're like, yeah. just you get in front of the current and you get money. Yeah. Um, it's, not always, it's not always that easy, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like the, the traffic's already there. Shopify, you have to create your traffic, but, um, you know, there's a lot of benefits. Like we were talking about, you don't pay commissions, yeah. you own the data, you can communicate to them again and again and again and create more value, more average order amount and just get more money. Totally. But usually it's going to be a little bit of a longer process if you go with Shopify, but it pays out more. So I like... I think there's more skills. I like the more long-term. Totally. Like with Amazon, I think it has less skills to master. That too. I think Shopify has more, there's more pieces that can, that can Lego onto it. And so therefore, like just mastering how to do Amazon listing, how to manage the account health and do some basic PPC instead of everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Get that cash. Hopefully that yeah, works. That uh, helps. Yeah. Julian. Uh, yep. I've got one from the Facebook too. I, I answered it, uh, but we'll give it to you guys. So everybody, and maybe my answer was wrong. Who knows? But uh, the question was from Anissa. Uh, so is there really no efficient way to capture info from Amazon? From Amazon? Uh, efficient? Um, so yeah. there's, <laughs> by the way, my, my answer was not directly from the Amazon platform. Yeah. So if you're, if you're fulfilling orders through Amazon, so you ship your inventory in, that's called FBA. Uh, no, it's like you can find out what city they're in, can't find out who they are or their address. Yeah. It's the same thing. If you have something that you want to sell on Walmart, you give it to them and they're selling it. It's their customers in the store. You're never going to find out who it is. You're going to get paid, you're going to make money, but you're not going to find out who it is so that you can directly market to them again. There used to be loopholes that have come and go throughout the years. Any Amazon seller will know sort of what happens, but they always get closed. So, yeah. Question. Not a question. Doesn't the fact of what you were talking about with the, uh, uh, the code on a bottle the, yeah. or a little slip in the packaging that someone can then get information. So yeah, you can't get it from Amazon, but as soon as they open that package, want more something, you can get that identity right there and find out that that was an Amazon customer, correct? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, not, not a 100% conversion rate. Right. So. Now, 
<laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, sorry. Does it affect Amazon and how Amazon will keep your account and status if you're caught doing that? Because I had a customer, or I had a, a company, a printing company, right. um, send me ink. Yep. And then say, S give me five stars if you do, and write us a review on Google. We will give you free ink. And Good they fine. did. They gave me free ink if it or I did. There you go. So, <laughs> but um, I was just wondering, people Amazon, do things, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, because Amazon um, got a hold of me and then said, we found out about this company that they did this, yeah. and they are no longer on Amazon. Oh, that's direct. So, that's so <laughs> review manipulation. Is, service. Yeah, review <laughs> manipulation is the one thing that they are like super hard about. And okay. I do not mess with reviews. So all okay. we're saying is, here's a product. If you want to know more about how to use it, here's some helpful advice. Got it. We're, or, hey, do you want to learn more about your metabolism? Here's, here's a helpful quiz. We're giving more okay. value to the customers. I've spoken directly to Amazon reps, and I've asked them, is this OK? And they say, yes, it's totally fine, okay. as long as you're providing value for the customers. Awesome. Th that's their metric, basically. So we're just very. Uh, Chill about how we handle it. I don't even say the word review. Yeah, never. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Never then, ask and, for a review. I had a question on TikTok. Now, does it hurt you opening up a second TikTok? Uh, hold the mic closer to your face. Oh, sorry. Thanks so much. I had a question on TikTok again. Does it hurt you? Because I opened up a second one just to have one for lives and one for not because, you know, and ever since I've opened up a second one, my algorithm has been down 80%. It doesn't, does it help you is your question or hurt you? No, does it hurt you? It doesn't hurt you. They're two different accounts. If you're posting the exact same content, that's duplicate content, you will get flagged and the second one's never gonna take off. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> so Sorry. If, you're, if you're gonna post different content, you can have as many accounts as you want. No, because you know? I didn't know, because what, yeah. what I was doing is I was posting no. uh, one area of just testimonials, but yeah. then of course those testimonials are all over my flagship of my other area. But I didn't realize having two of the same video yep. is a flag. Yeah. Yep. Yep, that they don't, they don't like that. makes sense now. They kind of, I think, I don't really know for sure, but I think that they detect it as like you're stealing somebody's content and putting up the same thing. The, the algorithm on these platforms are really, really smart. Like they can detect everything now. So anyways, guys, all right. So that was it. Thank you so Thank you much you. for coming. Hopefully it was uh, very helpful for you guys. Before you leave, you can go ahead and scan this if you want uh, to help us. Just take a quick survey. Just let me know your thoughts, what you thought about me. It's okay if you leave me a one-star review, I won't cry. <laughs> Are we going to do a quick selfie? Uh...